Greetings radio people, welcome back to the shack. I wanted to do a follow up from the last video where we took a look at this fairly cheap and cheerful 50 pounds worth of spectrum analyzer and tracking generator from the far east. We kind of concluded that um, it was okay as a signal generator but it wasn't much cop at uh, spectrum analysis on narrow bandwidth signals. It was quite useful though when we combined it with this uh, return loss bridge and looked at some resonant points on some microwave antennas and calculated the SWR. So today we're going to go spend a bit more money and we're going to see what we can do with an SDR play. This is the basic SDR play which I think retails now for about £110 and I'm going to see what we can do when we use this as a spectrum analyzer. This device covers from 1 kilohertz all the way up to 2 gigahertz and there's some software available to download from the SDR Play website written by Andrew Developments, whoever they may or may not be. And at the time of filming this is at version 1.04b. So we're going to try some of the basics we did last time on the SDR Play. We're going to generate some RF with my signal generators. Have a look at it and see what we can see. We've also got a tracking generator function built into the software which uses an Arduino and an AD9851 from analog devices which will add about another 20 quid to your cost and then we'll try and draw some conclusions. So let's get on with it. So as a quick test I've dug out a bit of kit that I made quite a few years ago. This was featured in the homebrew column of Radcom back in May 2011 and it was published as an IND test oscillator but it's perfectly good for the kind of thing we're interested in in spectrum analyzers seeing how good they are. So it's two Colpitz oscillators and they've got MOSFETs in the output by the looks of things. I don't remember the details of making this. But there's one, the top oscillator's got a 10 megahertz crystal in it. The bottom oscillator's got a 10.24 megahertz crystal in it. They then mix together here and then are, are taken to a BNC connector on, on the output. Now, if I were to uh, look at that on my Regal Spectrum Analyzer, it, I've also taken the frequencies and mixed them with 125 megahertz so that we've got a signal that we can use with all of the different things that we're looking at. Because if you remember, the ADF4351 doesn't start its frequency coverage until 35 megahertz. So here we've got a, a peak at 135 megahertz and another at 135.24 megahertz, plus some other products. Now these are the output of the mixing process and they're not actually in the original signal. Now, interestingly, if you look at the 10 and the 10.24 mix signal on an oscilloscope, it looks like this. And this is because the two signals are coming in and out of phase with each other. When they're both in phase, they both sum together to give us this peak. And then at the short time later, they're both out of phase with each other, which is why we get this trough like this. So these are individual sine waves inside here. If you were to slow the time base down, you'd be able to see it or rather speed the time base up. But you can see this overall pattern that we've got here is as a result of mixing the two things together. So let's go quickly back to the what the Regal looks like. Let's look at it on the uh, ADF4351 spectrum analyzer we tested last time and this is what the output spectrum looks like so that's pretty damn hopeless but as we concluded we know that it can't really resolve signals that are this close together it doesn't cope with narrow bandwidth signals at all so we've just got this mess here whereas this is the SDR play spectrum analyzer software and everything I can see here pretty much I can see here the peak of this signal is very much at around minus 22.6 it says db i've got it at minus 22.4 or 22.7 here so pretty much this is looking very much like a good image of what the rf spectrum actually looks like because we know from this image here that these four peaks or these five peaks are actually in the spectrum so that might be a clock product and there's a way that we can show you later to get rid of that. But generally as a starting point this looks much much better. So I've now got rid of the additional 125 megahertz that I was mixing uh, because we don't need to do that for the SDR play because it starts at 1 kilohertz its frequency coverage. So I've coupled up that Colpitz oscillator, or the two Colpitz oscillators I showed you, directly to the SDR play now. I've actually got a 20 dB attenuator in line as well. 
Um, and this is the spectrum that it's showing me. So we've clearly got two peaks here. So there's one at, it's slightly below 10 megahertz, and, and it is, my oscillators are probably cold or the crystals aren't accurate or whatever. And then this is the one that's at 10.24 megahertz. So as you saw, that cheap Chinese thing or the cheap thing from the Far East couldn't resolve signals that were this close together. Whereas the SDR Play is doing a perfectly good job and this software is doing exactly what you'd expect it to do. I've set the center frequency be t to be 10 megahertz. I've set the span to be one megahertz and the spectrum's delivering exactly what we want. And we can see the products in here quite clearly. So this is really, really good. So I've hooked up a signal generator now, which is generating a 500 megahertz signal. I've passed it through a 20 dB attenuator and I've tried that on the Regal, so I've stuck that signal here. There's a screen grab of what the Regal looks like. Um, that's got a, a signal level of around minus 2 dBm or thereabouts after it's been through the attenuator, which sounds about right. Now the um, RS uh, SDR Play uh, spectrum analyzer. You can see that there's different noise floors in the uh, in the spectrum analyzer depending on what frequency we're looking at. There's another step up at a lower HF type frequency as well that you can see. So I'm currently spanning from sweeping from 400 to 600 megahertz. This is finding the peak at 500 megahertz, um, although it's saying it's at about minus 16.9 dB. Now I need to tell you very clearly that I don't read instruction manuals so I haven't read the instructions for this software but what I can't find a way to do is get the, the um, marker that I've put there to actually sit on top of the signal peak because I can actually put that anywhere I want. It's not tracking the signal at all so I have to kind of find it and then click it in roughly the right place. But what we could do is keep the center frequency at 500 and perhaps change the span. So that's now down to a 2 megahertz span. But the amplitude of the signal doesn't appear to have changed very much. So I guess there's going to be calibration and various other things you can do. But if you haven't got an accurate instrument to calibrate against, I'm not sure what you're going to do. But if you were tuning an RF output stage or looking at the amplitude of your harmonics compared to the fundamental signal, or generally just looking at f uh, amplitude of very narrow bandwidth RF peaks, then this is going to do a good job for you. So I'm just going to change the source frequency now and change it to be one gigahertz. So we're going to have to change this now. And there we are. So we found the peak straight away at one gigahertz. So that seems to be okay. So let's go up again. Let's go up to 1500 megahertz. Oh, sorry, I've put it to 1900 megahertz. So let's see if we can find that. And there it is. So the peak is there at 1900 megahertz. And again, I suspect it's a bit down on amplitude. <coughs> My Regal spectrum analyzer though doesn't even cover this frequency so uh, I'm, I'm kind of alone now I'd have to I, I've got nothing to compare this with but I suspect it's a bit down on amplitude but it could also be that the attenuator that I'm using isn't very good at these kind of frequencies because at these frequencies also the cable that I'm using to connect the spectrum analyzer to the signal generator could have a huge impact at this frequency so anything could be going on at all but as a general is it finding the RF peaks then absolutely you bet it is. If I change the span to be 200 megahertz, you'll see there's a lot of other peaks and noise and various other things at fairly repetitive spaces. But it's also worth noting that these are right down at minus 80, minus 70 dB. And that's quite a low signal amplitude. I haven't found a way to say, set the, um, the base level at say minus 60 dB or something like that. So I've gone back to HF now and you can't help notice that over here there's a tracking gen button uh, and it's looking for a COM port. So I did a bit of research on this and if you look in the options um, clearly it's got the, op the, the possibility to connect an AD9851 to this, um, to this software to generate some kind of tracking generator signals. So this I thought was really quite interesting. The other thing I noticed was that if I go into the program files directory into the Andrew developments where this software has installed itself and then into the spectrum analyzer there's an Arduino firmware directory that's been installed and in here there are three hex files for a Mega 2560, a Nano and an Uno. So this is clearly the firmware that you need to run on an Arduino that's going to connect to the COM port that we've got over here. Now uploading a hex file to an Arduino is not entirely straightforward, 
but for those of you playing along at home I'll create a document that explains how to do this. So what I've done is I've uploaded this nano hex file to an Arduino Nano. I've connected the appropriate pins to an AD9851 DDS board, for, again from the Far East, that I've had here for a long, long time. And let's have a look at what this is going to do. But the first concern that I had was that, where well, I remember when I played with these boards some years ago, that the RF spectrum amplitude changes significantly. It drops significantly as the frequency increases. So that's something to think about when we're playing with this. But what I can do here, I can connect, and I happen to know that mine is connected to COM8. That's gone green, so that's a really good start. So the first thing we can do is either put this in, and the RF on clearly switches the RF on. You can either put it in spot mode, in which case you've basically got a signal generator, which is generating RF at the frequency that you select here. Or you can put it in track mode, and then one has to assume that it will track from whatever the spectrum selection we've got here is. So what I'm going to do is hook it up to an oscilloscope first, and let's just have a look at what the output looks like. So I've now got the Arduino hooked up um, to the computer. Uh, I've got this software configured correctly. It's connected to it, the firmware is loaded, and it's connected to the 89851, which I've currently got connected to my oscilloscope. Now, currently, because I've got this in track mode, the, um, the tracking generator is tracking from 9 to 11 megahertz, and that all looks quite successful. Now, if we were to increase the center frequency to, say, 30 megahertz, and let's say we want a span of 50, so we're going from 5 to 55 megahertz, if you look at the scope screen, you can now begin to see the problems where the frequency increases and the amplitude of the tracking generator signal decreases. So you really need to think hard about that before you start to use this thing in anger. Now, what would you typically do with this kind of setup? So you're either going to use your tracking generator spectrum analyzer for, uh, in combination with the return loss bridge, where you'd use it to look for resonant points within antennas, as we showed in the last video, or you're going to use it to sweep filters. Now here's something I found in my junk box. This is labeled 30 megahertz low pass filter. So I've coupled it up. The one side is coupled up to the tracking generator output. The other side is coupled up to the input on my Regal. And then we have a quick look at a span from naught to 60 megahertz. And this is the screenshot that's been produced. So you can quite clearly see that there's a pass of the signal here and then there's some attenuation and it starts to drop off into the noise here. So that looks exactly like a low pass filter. So this is the kind of thing we want to do. So hopefully if we were to now connect the output of our tracking generator that we're looking at on the oscilloscope, which has just lost its sync. Um, if we were to connect that to the input of our spectrum analyzer via the low pass filter, we should see something similar. So let's give that a go and see what it looks like. So the tracking generator output is now fed through that low pass filter that I swept here with my Regal and connected to the input of my spectrum analyzer. But what's immediately obvious is that the tracking generator, as it's called, is not in sync with the sweep of the spectrum analyzer. So we're not seeing a flat line, we're seeing this peak of RF. Now, I don't think that is a tracking generator, I think that's a signal generator with a sweep mode, um, which is not kind of the same thing at all. Now, when this gets back to the start of the frequency sweep again, we will see that the amplitude of the tracking generator signal is quite high. There it is on the left hand side. It's up here, here, here. You can see as it's tracking across the, the frequency sweep. And when it eventually gets to the center of the screen and starts to pass the 30 megahertz point where I know my filter begins to roll off quite nicely, um, what we'll see is that the attenuation comes in and we'll begin to see that the amplitude of the RF drops off. Now it's beginning to drop now, it's significantly lower now, and it's significantly lower again. But what I don't know is what 
whether that's because of my filter or because of the drop in amplitude of the tracking generator signal that we demonstrated on the scope. So I'm not going to go any further with this. Now it could be that I haven't read the manual properly or I've not paid enough attention, but a tracking generator has to track the sweeping of the spectrum analyzer. If it doesn't, you end up taking individual measurements, using graph paper and doing all of those kind of things, which kind of defeats the point. So uh, I'm going to stop at this point. I don't think this is much use to anybody really. Uh, let me know if you find a way to get the two things to sync. And please, if you think what I'm doing is useful, please subscribe to the channel because we seem to have quite a growing community of people now and it'd be quite nice if you join in the fun.